When we were such little girls, we were constantly exposed to these Disney films where you get a handsome man riding on a majestic white horse coming to save us and sweep us off our feet. This type of story in Disney films speaks to us and makes us believe that this is how love should be. Not even just Disney, but even romance films where there is the man coming to chase us. And that's where love is found. And that is where we are in our head thinking that is how love should be. That's how we find love. And this is where it kind of starts, where we suck at dating. Lesbians suck at dating and getting girls. In this video, I'm gonna talk about where all the deficiencies and the disadvantages that people don't talk about. This is what I've noticed growing up when I was younger learning to navigate the dating world. Maybe you guys can resonate and get a clearer understanding of where we're coming from. So it really starts in the beginning. We are born into a very heteronormative world. This culture, keyword culture here. I've talked about in the very beginning how we are fed this narrative in Disney films, media, many movies when we're older, how there's always this man chasing this woman. And branching off of that, we even see with guys who are living this heteronormative world, they are praised for chasing a girl, for asking a girl out. And even in locker rooms or even amongst their male friends, they are trying to give each other tips or getting them hyped up and mustering up the courage to speak to a girl. Girls don't get that. And being born in a society like this, again, heteronormative, we are not exposed to the concept of chasing after a person of interest. We are taught or exposed to, if not indirectly taught, but exposed to being the one to be chased after, the prize. We are there to exist and suitors or boys to come and approach us and ask us out for a date. Already we're at a disadvantage because we aren't in an environment where we are expected to chase after a girl or learn to or approach a person of interest. We don't have that camaraderie, that boys do to approach girls. So we're already at a disadvantage at a very young age. Not only that, but we also don't have enough resources. Growing up and in college, me trying to figure out how to approach girls, that was an opportunity where my parents were around and I could freely express myself to go on these dates with girls. But there was nobody holding my hand, nobody I can talk to, nobody I can relate to, like, hey, what should I do? My only resource was the internet. And when you do a quick search, on Google and you're looking for dating advice, there are going to be a plethora of resources specifically catered towards straight relationships. There are gonna be plenty of articles where it's gonna be like five things to look for in a girl or why men act this way towards women. It's going to be these specifically gender specific type of interactions or articles talking about love. It's hard for me to place myself and relate to these resources and the self-help type articles when it's not about a girl and a girl. Am I the man in the situation? Am I the girl in the situation? And it's very confusing and we don't have those resources to help us because we don't fit in that heteronormative piece. Another disadvantage that I've experienced is that I didn't feel comfortable with my sexuality until later in life. Again, being born into this heteronormative world where we may feel like we need to act straight, we don't understand who we are, who we find attractive until a little later in life. And especially if you're like me, who's born into a very conservative family, you learn to hide that piece of you. You don't have the freedom to explore that side of you. So of course I was in college and underage drinking and I was in this game to play truth or dare. I was dared to kiss this other guy. And I told them that I was saving my very first kiss for a girl. I was like 18 or something. And I feel like so many people have gotten their kisses, their very first kiss at this age. But it wasn't until I was 19 that I had my first kiss with a girl. But looking back, I just didn't have those experiences that many other straight people had. Having their first kiss, having their first date, having their first breakup. And there's so much that's learned in that time period of having to work through all those emotions that I didn't get to experience. And while I did share that first kiss with that one girl and I did have some sort of situationship, I did not handle it appropriately. I was just a complete mess. I felt jealousy if when she was like talking to guys, 
she was i think she was bi but she was talking to other people and i felt jealous and like when she wanted to stop talking to me i just felt so many negative emotions towards me negative emotions towards her and it was just so immature and unhealthy i look back at this with more experience and i'm embarrassed by it and i feel bad that she had to go through that but also understanding the place that i was coming from i didn't have those experiences where maybe she have had when she was in high school because this was not her first relationship this was definitely my very first i'm just thinking like i'm sure other other lesbians probably have gone through this and if we understand that you know people come and bloom at different ages and different times maybe we can have a little bit of more grace and understanding where everybody's coming from if you want to elevate your dating life and get more dates i have a free download for you down in the description where i'm going to walk you through how to craft your first message to the girl this is gonna get her to respond and get her interested to speaking with you. Check it out down below. Another issue or another disadvantage of being in this queer community is that we're feared of being hate crimes and being outed. That's always going to be a concern for plenty of people who identified in a minority, especially in an environment where it's not welcomed. I'm here in the US and I would say that, you know, we've become, we've come a long way in terms of being accepting and no way would I expect somebody to come out to compromise their safety and their security. And because many of us are already in a marginalized community and having that risk of displaying who we are, our true colors, I understand that fear of not wanting to come out or not wanting to risk your own safety. And that's why I hid for me, when I was in high school, like I had these feelings uh, towards women when I was like in 10th grade, but there was no way for me to explore those feelings safely. There was no way for me to go and talk to my parents about it. I was still living under their house and they were so conservative. So I, did, I, I hid that part of my life until I finally got to college where I can live on my own. So that puts us at a disadvantage because if you're in that environment where you can't be who you are, you don't get to explore that side of you. So that further delays your, your chance of experiencing and learning what it's like dating. Leading to my final point, we're born in this world where most people are straight and probably 90% of the world is straight. So our disadvantage here is that we have a smaller dating pool. Like you would definitely get a higher chance of practicing dating and going on dates if you were straight, but that's not the case here. So having a smaller dating pool lowers our chances of running into the potential of going on dates. And really what I've learned is going on multiple dates has really helped me improve my courage, uh, knowing how to be comfortable in these situations because there's obviously a lot of tension. You expecting to probably put on your, your best foot forward and hoping that this person likes you is what a lot of people think going on these dates. Having kind of like working that muscle, we become more comfortable. That's what I experienced. Without having those multiple repetitions, we're not able to put in the reps to be more comfortable, to act more confidently and knowing how to show up our best self and our true self in in a high, in high intense environment like dating, especially if it's your first time, but it becomes easier. By understanding our hurdles and our weaknesses, we can now learn to overcome them, be more aware of where we are and be able to give us a little bit more empathy and grace for why dating is so difficult. So this is why I started this YouTube channel because for everything I've learned, so far, I wish somebody would post this stuff online, like there would be a resource for it. And I wanted to provide that resource for you guys, for other lesbians and other queer women who want to date women who didn't have that sister or that mom and dad to tell them like what you're going through is normal, to tell them, hey, like go talk to that girl. Or if she said no, like it's going to be okay. There will be love out there. I didn't have that, but I want you to have that but i don't want you to give up hope i think there's so much greatness ahead of you which is why i'm here rooting for you and providing you guys with the resources this is why i think you should check out this video next where i talk about my journey of being basically a nerd through high school and learning how to become this person who's so confident in dating and being comfortable and maybe this is something that you guys can resonate with or you know motivate you guys also check out this playlist where i talk about all the lesbian dating LGBT dating advice that I have for you. Thanks for watching and as always, stay confident and stay true to yourself.